I'm Ben Miller, a scientist who's researched in half a dozen academic labs. I interned at BU, Northwestern, and then went to Columbia and got my degree. I even spent a year teaching on a science bus. But I gave it all up to pursue stand-up comedy. And now, I'm combining my passions into stand-up science. Hello, class. Today we're discussing the question, how do refrigerators work? Now everybody asks, is your refrigerator running? But nobody asks, how is your refrigerator running? Why is your refrigerator running? What is your refrigerator running from? Now you may remember refrigerators as they star of the 2019 Academy Award winning film, The Joker. Critics describe the fridge's performance as absolutely chilling, portraying the cold hard truth of how to keep food fresh. Rotten Tomatoes even said, this device prevents tomatoes from getting rotten. Now let's get into the history of refrigerators. Back in the 1800s, before these mechanical marvels, they kept food fresh using an ice box, which was literally just a box with ice in it. They would deliver ice to you, you would shove it in the box. That's like if before ovens, they would just ship you lava. Like, hey, fresh delivery from the volcano, get it while it's hot. Before all the jokes about the milkman sleeping with your wife, and yes, I will discuss milk every single episode, there were jokes about the ice man sleeping with your wife. So I feel like now, if we wanted to update it for modern times, we should have like a genre of jokes about like the DoorDash delivery guy sleeping with your wife. But it's 2021, so the husband is asking for it because he's a cop and he likes to watch. Mechanical refrigerators were commercially available in the 1910s and became cheap and popular enough to phase out ice boxes by about the 1950s. But before we can dive in to how these work, we need to discuss the three laws of thermodynamics. Now the first law of thermodynamics is that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred from one form into another. The universe is essentially snowballing energy back and forth, you know, passing it from one form into another, not creating or destroying it, maybe just adding a little bit of saliva. And the second law of thermodynamics is that energy must always flow from higher energy to lower energy, or from hot to cold. We're all reminded of the second law of thermodynamics at a pretty young age, because if you touch a hot stove, it burns you. The stove is at a higher temperature than your finger. So when you touch it, the heat is transferred from the stove into your finger, and then you go, ah, I shouldn't have done this. Should have listened to my parents. Maybe I shouldn't have because they made me drink all that milk. I don't know. Listen to them, don't listen to them. It's a confusing life. The third law is that a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. No, I'm sorry. That's actually the third law of robotics. The Third law of thermodynamics is no soldier shall in times of peace be quartered in an owner's home without their consent. That, that, that's not it either, actually. The, the actual third law of thermodynamics is not really relevant for this video, just like the Third Amendment is not really relevant for our lives. Now that we understand the first two laws of thermodynamics, let's apply them to the refrigerator. So let's think about a refrigerator at room temperature. Now in order for the refrigerator to lower its temperature, there would have to be a colder thing inside of it to absorb its heat. You couldn't put lava inside of it because that would raise the temperature. And while you're busy doing that, the lava delivery guy is busy doing your wife, and you don't even get to watch. It, it, it's a whole mess, trust me. The cold thing that absorbs heat in your refrigerator is very cleverly called a refrigerant. Now once the refrigerant absorbs heat, it passes outside into the compressor. Now the compressor compresses the refrigerant into an even smaller volume. This increases the temperature because the smaller space something is in, the hotter it gets. Yes, smaller things are hotter. That's science. Don't listen to anything my ex-girlfriend said. This is an infrared temperature gun. And as you can see, the compressor is very hot. So hot I'd actually say it's probably running a fever. We should get it to a hospital. It's definitely a symptom. Now the compressor has a single piston, sort of like a piston in a car engine. And you know, most guys brag about their cars having like a V6 or whatever, and most refrigerators are a V1, but mine actually has a V8 in it. The high temperature refrigerant then passes through coils where it is cooled off. The refrigerant is at a very high temperature as opposed to room temperature, so heat flows from the refrigerant into the room and it cools down. Next, the cooled refrigerant passes into something called an expander. No, not the dental device. This expander allows the refrigerator to expand to get even cooler. It's essentially the opposite of a compressor in that it allows things to spread out 
and thus lowers its temperature. The now cold refrigerant flows back into the fridge at a lower temperature than the rest of its contents. And the refrigerant absorbs heat from all your fruits and vegetables and that two month old takeout that you refuse to throw away. Then the refrigerant passes back outside and the cycle starts all over again. Truly the circle of life. And by circle of life, I mean all that mold growing on your old takeout. Seriously, it's disgusting. You have to get rid of it. In conclusion, refrigerators take heat from the inside and then they put it outside. They essentially make your food colder by making the room warmer. It's like that guy who shovels out his driveway by throwing all the snow on your driveway. And yes, that's what I meant by snowballing earlier, I promise. Please don't look it up, kids. So now you know that if you're ever cold in the winter, instead of huddling around a fireplace, you can actually huddle around the back of your refrigerator. Why look at a Yule log when you can be comforted by the knowledge of how refrigerators work? And isn't that truly the magic of Christmas? To be honest, I never really understood how Christmas works. I'm Jewish. Now this has been an oversimplification of refrigerators, whereas the kids would say, I'm simping refrigerators. So if you're interested in taking a bit of a deeper dive and not just being a simp, I've included all my sources in the description. Thanks so much, class. I hope you learned something today.